Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Welcome to the first video for my new June 2021 release with Paper Artsy. In this video, I'll show you how I created this vintage sort of folder full of three mushroom tags. But first, let me introduce you to my newest stamps and stencils. We will go from the dark starry night creatures to the moist ground floor full of mushrooms, finding in between cute little creatures and botanical treasures. Welcome to a walk in my vintage forest. In ESC24, the Scottish owl that I drew a while back finally made it into a stamp set. I decided that since it's a night creature, I could surround it by stars and by the gorgeous moon that I drew out from a picture taken by my friend Jordi Colette. Some night quotes and the beautiful stripes that you could emboss in gold make this stamp set usable throughout the year, not only for autumn and Halloween, but also to send love and strength to your loved ones. Now it comes my favorite forest creature, the squirrel, hoarding nuts as they usually do and planting future mighty oaks for us. The red is the perfect frame for a quote or a little element and the stripes here are very playful. I'll show you how you can use them in future videos. And that fern is a botanical treasure on its own. And now we finally go down to the moist forest ground to find some colorful treasures in the shape of mushrooms. A beautiful oval collage label is ready for you to stamp any pair of words you want from the ones in the set. You can split each pair of words so you can mix and match and create different titles like art journal, botanical curiosities, vintage treasures, you name it. Many combinations for you with this one. And to pair these beautiful stamps we have three matching stencils. One about stars with the great quote, love you to the moon and back. One about nuts for you to create a three layer pattern of acorns, so much fun to use and one botanical with layer mushrooms, branches and more. I hope you liked my release. Now let's put this ESC26 mushroom stamp set to use. First, I'm going to create a master board. I'm using a piece of smoothie heavy cardstock and some golden sands infusions diluted in water. So I'm adding some infusions there and spreading it with the brush. I'm adding some splashes of water and then I'm drying, adding some more splashes of actual dirty water as I call it by diluting more infusions but a bit more um, condensed if you want to say it that way a bit darker and then I'll keep on adding detail to that page adding drops going back to my desk to fit as much of that infusions as I can to add lots of uh, textures and now I'm going to add some distress inks I'm putting it into my craft sheet and then spraying some water I'm going down with it and then I'm drying and I'll add more inks on top once it's dry. I think I'm using Vintage Photo Distress, the regular ones, and also tea dye. So now with the domes sponges, I love these ones, I'm so happy that they released these ones. I'm adding more ink towards, well, everywhere basically, trying to make my paper a bit flat now. And now let's, I'll stamp some images. This is the mushroom definition which is perfect for the background. And then I'll also be using the little leaves, those two branches as well, to add more interest and more, well, detail. So then once the master board is ready and I like it, then I'm basically going to cut it out in pieces, long ones, and then we'll basically have the basic elements to create my folder. And then I'll select the ones that I like more and so on and so forth. But first I'm adding some ink because I like to kind of edge everything, age it and then adding some more distress look to each piece. So I'll keep on adding ink every time that I cut a piece out there. Now I'm going to stamp that um, oval centi uh, label because I'm going to add the forest treasures title on it. So first I'm stamping there. I like it so much. <laughs> and now I'm going to put forest treasures in between. All the pair of words perfectly match that oval. So now I'm trimming that down just to make sure that it's in the center. And then I'm going to cut that bit out. So that will be, well, the basic, the, the first flap where I will store the first card. And as I said, I'm cutting, so I'm <laughs> adding some more ink. And now I'll set this aside and start with the different cards. I'm starting with the big one. I'm selecting that big mushroom and I'm stamping it there. And then I'm going to just stamp the mushroom definition at the bottom. I think 
this card doesn't need anything else basically so I'll just add some color now with a mix of infusions as glaze as I normally like to do I'm testing the color before applying it to the page and then I'm just adding first golden sands so my yellow now I'm going to add some rusty car which is the orange and I'll add it to the top and then I'll add some olive tree to paint the leaves and then I'll just add a wash using black night infusions which is like the black one but then it turns out a very nice kind of blue tone and I like it very much and I am adding some splashes of water to add some texture and once dry I'm adding some ink vintage photo as usual and I'm focusing kind of on the edges so then well the image in the center will stand out I really liked how it turned out and I'm going to repeat the same kind of technique on the other cards final touches of ink and we're done with this one so now we move on to the medium card and I'm going to just ink up that Amanita muscaria or <laughs> the fairy tale mushroom and then I'm stamping at the same time the botanical art uh, title now I'm creating a mask and I'm cutting it out because I want to add some branches and I want to think, I mean, to, to pretend that they're hiding from behind the mushroom. Therefore, I need a mask. So I'm protecting my image and then I'm going to stamp this. And yeah, I'm trimming here very carefully my stamp set in two. So I'm isolating those two branches and I'm cutting an extra piece of paper to protect the floor. And now I'm going with a big branch on two sides of the mushroom and then with a little branch I'm going to stamp on two sides. And it's done. Once the mask is removed it's perfect and it seems that they are hiding from behind the mushroom. So now I'm protecting those white dots just by applying some glaze. So that will make sure that they stay white when I apply my wash. And now I'm mixing a bit of that golden sands infusions to paint the yellow part of the mushroom. I know that the real mushroom is a bit more whitish rather than yellowish, but the fact of adding yellow allows me to actually add some shadow, so I'm fine with that. And now I'm mixing some of that Sunset Beach, which is like a pink one, uh, with some leftovers of the yellow, so then it kind of looks a bit more reddish. And I'm adding little by little that color of paint everywhere in the mushroom, so then I make sure that it's a red one. I love this mushroom. I'm so happy when I find one in the forest, even if I don't eat them. <laughs> but it's just, they look so beautiful and, and magical. I love them. So now that it's done, I'm going to basically mix a bit more of green. And even if those branches don't have like a place to basically uh, no, no room for adding green, I'm anyway going, going to add green there on top of them. I used a brown pen to actually draw the floor. And then from that green, I'll also apply it to the ground just a little bit under that line. And now with the leftovers of Black Knight, I'm applying like the uh, sky and then some of the green for the bottom. So it's just adding that background as you like it and some drops to create similar texture as before. And once dry, I'm going to trim that down so it kind of fits in the middle pocket and it's kind of nice and proportionate basically. So now I'm going to add same ink as I did before and I'll move on to the third and final card, the smallest one with that cluster of mushrooms. So I'm making sure that they kind of offset a little bit of the side so they will look nicer. And again, I'm cutting down that mask to protect my mushrooms because I'm going to use the mushroom definition stamp to create like a background behind the, the actual mushrooms. So I'm going to get that stamp set and, and stamp here and there. So the first impression, it's like, well, the first stamping generation, pretty obvious, but the others are like repetitions without re-inking. So then they will be more fainted and more looked in the background. And again, I'm drawing some floor. And then it's time for adding color in the same way that I did before. So same yellow and then applying there into the mushrooms. And you can add, because it's a translucent paint where we are creating here, you can add one layer after the next if you want to darken more um, layers. So if you want a, 
and yellow to be darker you can give it two good layers <laughs> and you will not cover your image so that's great for adding color now i'm adding the green and then once it's done again a wash out on the top using black knight and some of the green i think and that will be done and the final step of inking oh yeah i forgot i'm also adding some golden suns into those mushrooms from the label just to make sure that they stand out a bit more and basically to make the label pop up more so then it looks lighter right and the same those branches which are actually the same branches that you saw that i stamped um before uh, they are part of the actual collage so you can extend that collage if you want on the left and on the right by adding the actual branches from the set and make it bigger i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> So I'm inking a bit more because, you know, there's always room for more ink. <laughs> and then I'm finally moving to the actual folder. And again, more inking, more uh, definition of those edges. And I'm just adding different distress oxide inks here and there. And basically what I did was cutting each piece a bit like, well, I don't know, n n not straight. So then they would fit and it would be like that. And now, instead of gluing things, I'm going to actually sew them with a sewing machine. But first, I'm preparing some background for my cuts, because I think that when you frame them, they look much nicer and completed. So I'm basically trimming down the paper so it fits and all of them kind of show the same margin. And then I'm going to just quickly apply some ink on those. I think I'm using Distress Oxide, the... Um, ground espresso one to add just an instant background <laughs> there so that will be instead of actually using a cardstock that it's brown I'm creating my own back for those cards and once done I will mount them so basically just sticking them with some glue um, I think maybe a cut here but you get the idea basically it's attaching all those cards into those um, back frames and that's it and then the final step for the folder is going to be stitching. So now you get an unusual shot from my table from the side, basically, because I'm just trying to show you how I'm, I'm stitching this. I'm basically using the wheel manually, okay? I'm not pressing the pedal, uh, just because, I mean, the image is so little that me kind of moving it around and making sure that I um, do the actual border would be tricky and also considering that it's a very thick paper it was pretty difficult for me to perforate basically and i didn't want the machine to suffer a lot and i actually wanted stitching so i thought manual intervention on this time would be better and then once i put the two papers together then i think i went and then used the petal so that first part is attached and then i'm doing the two parts of those different pockets because definitely you don't want to close a pocket so you need to apply the stitching before attaching the pocket to the to the actual piece and then I'm, I'm i'm adding that there and i'm using no glue in this one i'm just making sure that all papers stay together by stitching and i'm attaching them in pairs and i'm doing it like that because then i have more control on where they sit and also because I didn't know if my machine would be strong enough as to perforate four layers of this sort of paper. So once I, now I have the two individual pockets separated and I'm putting them together now with some stitching. And now I'm using the petal, so it was not that hard at the end. And it's kind of done, so it's just a matter of cutting out the little threads. And that is done and we just need to assemble the whole thing. And I also frame it in a back thing, like the other cards, as you can see. And I'm going to create like a little embellishment using Quick Cure Clay. This is a clay that I discovered thanks to Sarah Newman. Uh, she introduced me to that in her previous release. I think it was in January or so. So I decided to get it. And uh, Stampers Grove kindly gifted it to me. So thank you so much for that. And uh, so I got to play with it. And basically, I'm just marking a little bit the shape of the mushroom. It's very faint, you don't see it. But then I start from top to bottom, okay? So with the back of the brush, I'm just pushing down and making sure that I mark the first layer. 
the top layer actually, which are the little dots, okay? So once that is done and I mark it hard, then I'm basically pulling that out and I have the dots on the clay. And then I move to the next layer, which is the cup, and I repeat the same thing. So I press hard with the um, pencil, I mean with the back brush, and then I have that marked. And then I'll move on to the third one and do, repeat the same. And here I'm really pushing hard. I destroyed a little bit, but I <laughs> got very excited basically. So you just need to be careful and make sure that you press. And the stencil here is acting like a cookie cutter basically. So the harder and deeper you cut uh, or you press, the, the, the thinner your layer behind will be. So now I'm using a palette knife just to remove that excess. I think you could actually do it by hand, but I wanted to kind of cut it out a bit. And uh, this clay is so weird because you'll see me using also uh, the scissors to trim the excess. And of course, well, it's clay, so it seems like you're cutting stone with the scissors. So I think it's better not to use scissors because you may destroy them. The, you know, so better, you don't want to play with the blade and get your scissors destroyed. But I tried and then it was so funny and weird <laughs> cutting that there. That's a weird feeling. So I shaped it with the hands basically. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing from the other side of the stencil because I want a mirror image. Um, you could just leave it flat and attach the chain like that. But I decided that I wanted like it to be kind of ended. So I showed you how I did the original piece. So now I'm, I've just turned the stencil the other way and I'm using exactly the same mushroom. Okay, so I'm pressing again with the brush in the same way, marking the dots, then the cup, and then the then the bottom part. And yeah, here I press too hard, so don't don't be that hard <laughs> because then you basically can pull the dots out, and you don't want that. You want them to stay put in the clay, not in your stencil. So I press too hard, I think. But well, practice makes perfect. So just try again, <laughs> and it will be okay. So yeah, then I did the cap, and then the bottom part. And I saw a lady that I think it's called Un Rincón de Mi in Spanish. I'll try to link her in the Instagram. And I saw her that she was doing this with normal clay. I mean, not with a stencil, of course, but with other stencils that were very nice. So when I got my stencil, I thought, oh my gosh, I can do that. And actually I can create embellishments using this uh, pressing technique. Uh, just make sure that with this clay, once you use that brush, you clean that brush, okay? Because afterwards I was applying some um, glue with it and I put it in my mouth and this is toxic, guys, <laughs> okay? So, uh, I mean, I had to go and spit and uh, try to clean and rinse my mouth a lot. I mean, I didn't swallow anything and I'm okay. I'm a, this is a day later, I'm still alive, okay? But um, this is toxic, kind of, and it says that it's irritant and it may affect the liver and so on. So I'm, I was just spitting like crazy, as you can imagine. So be very careful with this clay. And the touch is very weird as well. It's very sticky, but it has like, well, it, it has a fun feature, which is that basically you heat set that and then it becomes hard and it's instantly cured. And you don't need to wait or anything and you can just use it. It's just that the finish and the way to work with it is a bit weird, okay? It's not regular clay. And then, um, well, I'm just rounding that there to kind of close the two pieces together with a chain in the middle. And then, well, I'm going to use the heat tool, um, the embossing tool actually, because it's much more powerful and faster um, on the piece. And I'm hanging it with a pair of tweezers, which I'm covering with a piece of cloth, you will see, because I don't want to, um, well, um, burn myself. Okay, so there you go, the tweezers, and then I come with the heat tool and then it's pretty instant you don't see it here but there are some fumes going out so it smells a bit badly so it's better if you open the window i didn't open them because it was a tiny piece and then don't touch it don't touch it for a good five ten minutes okay it's really really hot so the tweezers had a magnet and just let it there and now i'm telling you how i put together the decorations for the pockets so basically just a little decoration there and then some metallic elements. So those Team Holtz um, ideology clips, I'm just putting them there. Then a little medallion from I don't know where <laughs> that I bought. I think I bought it at in Paris. Yeah. And then, well, the actual mushroom that I did before. Um, 
and with the chain so it will hang from there and now I'll show you how to put these two pieces so basically uh, the brats are super simple you just poke a hole where you want to place them then feed it through open the legs and then the excess you can cut it with a Tim's hole scissors or just hide it somehow and now with multimedium mate I'm just adding some of that uh, glue on on the back and then let it sit don't press so you just let it sit and it will dry okay now my mushroom is completely cold and I'm going to add some color and here by mistake I don't know why I selected the pit pens the fair faber castell and well it kind of worked okay but the color was not as the one that I was having so I thought okay this is not what I used <laughs> so I actually used an acrylic paint you could use also normal paint and a very very fine um uh, what is it brush but I went for the um, actual pen and again this clay is very weird it's kind of soaks in the ink so it gets the color um, brought into the different parts so you will see that it kind of um, goes inside so uh, inside of the dots which are supposed to be white so then um, I had to kind of get back that white with a gel pen Bad decision again. It's better to stick with the acrylic paint here because I think it took ages to dry or it didn't dry basically. So that white faded out uh, later on. But I think I prefer to leave it as it is. I mean, that clay is kind of natural color. So it looks okay if, if you just leave it like that. But I wanted to try how it looked in white and it kind of pops up a, a lot. So yeah, you can create the mushroom as you want basically. So that's the decoration hanging that I did there. You like it? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> and it will be different. You'll see. I mean, that, that clay is a bit weird. So um, this is the other one that you see it's less white. And this is how it turns out. And all the different cards there. Very cute things and decorations. And this is it basically, guys. I hope you like the project. And I hope you like my release. If you liked, I would love to see your comments, what you think about this one, if if you like it or not. And also, if you like this project, I would um, like, well, if you could like the actual uh, video, it would be great. And then, yeah, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And I hope you stay and you subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. And here are some pictures of the actual uh, project. Always pictures are much better than the actual video. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, I really enjoyed creating this one and I have many other videos on the queue. It's just I didn't have time to edit them yet. So hopefully I will be posting something, another video soon. Thanks very much for watching and nothing else from me. I'll just leave you after this one some other videos that you may like and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take care and bye bye.